what's going on, y'all? This is Mike D, Mr. Double Down on You, and we got another episode of Brothers Learning from Sisters today. And literally, this is a really cool conversation, right? Really, really cool conversation. And this is going to be a conversation around something that, to be completely honest, brothers don't pay a whole lot of attention to, and that's skincare. Yeah, yeah, real talk. We're going to talk skincare today. And, um, and I have none other than Sybil Bailey. She is the creator of Afro Mermaid Skincare. She's a Knoxville, Tennessee native of a voracious, I can't get that word out, voracious reader. Um, but then she's also a skincare enthusiast. And real talk, you know, a friend of ours, we got to give a shout out to Lamicia Butler McFarland, I call her L, for connecting us because, you know, she was just like, you know, there are two folks in Knoxville that I highly respect, that are good friends of mine, that are doing the doggone thing. You two need to connect. So we got to give a shout out to our friend L for bringing us together here. But the whole concept of skincare, and I thought about brothers learning from sisters, and skincare is not something we put an emphasis on a whole lot as brothers. So what better to do than bring on a skincare expert, the creator of Afro Mermaid Skincare, Miss Sybil Bailey. How you doing? I'm good. Excited to be here and talk about my passion. Mm, talk about your passion. Talk about your passion. Now, so before we jump into your passion, we're going to get into you and your story a little bit. And before we get into okay. that... We'd like to get some shout outs because who are we without our team, our friends, our family, the people that help us to be the best version of ourselves? So give some shout outs and then we'll jump into your story. Oh, wow. I know how people feel on stage accepting an award because I'll be mortified if I forget anybody. So <laughs> let's just say um, to, for, my build, for my business to come to fruition, um, the stars aligned, people that I knew with the right skills stepped up and gifted me things. So mm -hmm. shout out to the Thought Bureau for my branding. Shout out to Crystal Martin for photography. Um, shout out to Ethan Brewer for photography space, my models, um, my girlfriends, my former coworkers, people literally lined up to support me. And I get a little weepy now still thinking about it. Mm, that's amazing. And you know, it's, it really it's, is. You know, there's, um, and I've mentioned this on other platforms and interviews and all, there's a book, and it's one of my favorite books of all time. It's called The Alchemist. And in The Alchemist, it's a book by Paolo Coelho. The theme of The Alchemist states that if you pursue your personal legend, the universe conspires to help you along on your journey. And your personal legend is, you know, your calling or your purpose. And as you start pursuing that, all these things start to align. And as we mentioned before, and this is probably a good segue into your journey, you know, you mentioned that you're a skincare enthusiast. This is your passion. And as you started to pursue that passion, like you just mentioned in your support system here, the things started to line up and it's like that path started to clear. And so speaking of that, take us back to your journey. Like how did you become a skincare enthusiast, or what really was the inspiration behind that in your life? So I've always loved like skincare and hair and nails and those kind of things. You know, when I was younger in my 20s, I was the one that did girlfriend's nails and toenails, and I just liked beauty and, and more than that, taking care of people. Mm -hmm. um, my journey to this place started when I left corporate America. Hmm. Uh, the timing was right for me to leave the company that I had been with for about 14 years uh, that I loved, that I loved the people I worked with. It was a great place to be, but I had absolutely no passion for it. Hmm. So when the time came for me to leave, I thought, what would I do if I could do anything I wanted to do? And it was literally beauty school. Mm. So at 49, <laughs> I enrolled at Tennessee School of Beauty with a lot of really, really young ladies who also taught me a lot along the way. And it was just a joy. I loved it. And I'm so thankful that I took that leap. It was scary then. And it's scary now even talking about it. Um, I didn't do it on my own. I had the support of my husband. 
I don't know if I would have been brave enough to do it completely on my own. Nevertheless, I'm glad it's done. Um, so yeah, from corporate my whole life, the most recent job being for years to this brand new thing just was exactly what I needed. My entire life, I've heard people say, if you do what you love, you'll mm. never work a day in your life. And I was like, Walker. <laughs> and it turns out that that is absolutely true because there is never a day that I come here and I'm not looking forward to it mm. for one client or six clients. I love it every day. Mm. I want to, I want to jump into something there. You know, you mentioned that the time was right for you to step out of corporate America, but then you also mentioned that you were led to enroll in school at not an early age. Right. And to that point, it's interesting because I think a lot of ladies and a lot of guys listening to this, you know, sometimes we put these parameters on when change can happen or when I can do things like, you know, like I'll be 41 in, you know, a couple of weeks here. And what's interesting is my contemporaries will talk, you know, in this whole you know, defeatist scenario. Oh, well, you know, we on the back end of this and the back end of that. I'm like, dude, I mean, granted, we don't know how long we got. I mean, our timeline is not determined by us, but the reality is whether we got another six months or another 60 years, you need to live life as if, you know, this thing's going to continue. So to me, what gate, I mean, you mentioned the support system around you, but I bet you there was still some trepidation on going back to school and not being 19 or 20 years old, right? Oh, for sure. How did you push I, uh, through that? So I came of age in a time where you absolutely positively had to go to college or you shamed your parents and every ancestor. Mm -hmm. You needed to go to college and you need to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like there was extra pressure on me because before college, I was brilliant. I skipped mm -hmm. a couple of grades. Mm -hmm. I just enjoyed learning. Mm -hmm. But man, college was not for me. Mm. I did not enjoy it. And I got about 75% of a journalism degree and finally just gave up. Mm. Wow. I wish that back then I could have gone to beauty school. Oh, oh, pause. See, that's, that's an interesting concept because as we, you know, we, I have a nine and a seven year old, right? And a lot of times we get very dogmatic in what they need to do and the path they mm -hmm. need to take. And I've come to understand that it's not my job to push them in a direction. It's my job to analyze and see where they have natural proclivities, where they have interests, where they have gifts, where they have skills and pour gasoline on those fires early because, and it's not me trying to direct them into a path. Like I interviewed a brother on black fathers now. And one of the things that he talked about was as a parent, you have to take, or as a father, you have to take ego out of it. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he said, the thing is a lot of times as parents, we want to be known as good parents. It's a difference between being known as a good parent and just being a good parent. See, being known as a yeah. good parent is I want to raise two doctors or I want to have two lawyers. I want everybody to talk about my kids went to Ivy Leagues and my kids did this and my kids did that. They're and the thing is, if we're honest about it, that's an ego boost for us versus yeah. taking a step back and realizing what is it that our kids need? Because, and I think we're kind of coming into that awakening in this day and age with technology and awareness and all of that. Because to your point, fast forward to now, there's a little girl or a little guy coming up now that's 10, 11, 12 years old that's into hair care and skin care and all of that. And their parents can see like, hold up, you know, maybe you do need to go to cosmetology school. Let's pour some gasoline mm -hmm. on this fire now. You can cut hair and do this while you're in high school. But then after that, we need to send you to cosmetology school instead of sending you to the university yeah. to get a degree in journalism. Yeah, I think that I don't have any children, but I used to be one. Mm -hmm. And I think that <laughs> I love the it. best gift that you can give your babies is encouraging their joy. And mm -hmm. I'm sure we've all had enough soul sucking jobs to know yes. that that is no way to spend your life. Your life is what happens outside of work, but you can't discount how much time 
you spend at work, if you take away sleeping hours, you're there more than anywhere else. Mm. So if that can be time that brings you joy, it absolutely should be because, you know, my corporate job, I made excellent money, Mm -hmm. but there were times when I couldn't lift my left shoulder and I was grinding my teeth at night. Mm. So this is so crazy to say, because people that know me will be like, what? But I am a proponent of joy in your life. And I know that sounds oversimplified, Mm -mm. but really, if you can do work that brings you joy and makes you happy, you absolutely should do it. Find a way to monetize those things. Yes. Like you mentioned, and it's like, we also have to remove the concept that simple is not good, right? Because what you mm-hmm. just mentioned there, yes, it's simple, but guess what? We can execute on simple. We can't execute mm-hmm. on this complex, whatever, 50 layered, 12,000 step plan. No, simple is what you execute on. You know, I even have written down over there next to my notes, you know, simple purpose driven execution. Like that's my focus. Because sometimes I go down rabbit holes and I get too complex with stuff. And I'm going to be honest with you, complexity is a defense mechanism for me to then give me an out to not do it because it was hard. Like I've learned that about myself. When you spend time with yourself, you understand it. Whereas if I really want to execute, I have to keep it simple. Simple, purpose-driven execution is my focus. Otherwise, it probably ain't going to get done. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good segue into skincare because Mm -hmm. you are not alone in that thinking. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I stress to my clients is this does not have to be complicated and involve 12 steps. Mm. It literally can be as little or as much as, as you need or feel like you need to correct issues that you have. It's really the basis of it is consistency. Mm. I'm constantly saying that to every client I have consistency makes for beautiful skin Mm. consist so when you say consistency and beautiful skin and again brothers learning from sisters you know talk to the brothers because when you say consistency what do you mean i just need to take my showers and put my lotion on i mean what is it that i'm you 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 think literally you know there's there's a guy on the radio his name joe madison he always says you got to put it where the goats can get it Right. So when you're talking this skincare, <laughs> this skincare stuff, you got to put it where the goats can get it. Like before we got started, I told you, like my wife got stuff in there and she gets mad at me because I might use the wrong expensive stuff, put it all over my head. And she's like, and a whole you know lot how much that costs? Sure. Say what? <laughs> yes. I said and a whole lot of it using more than you need too. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell me what the yeah. So, so, te- so literally break it down. Like for real, like treat me like an elementary. I don't know nothing about skincare. Talk to us. What do you mean by consistency? What are you talking about? Um, So let's start with some of the tips that I give clients that I've seen the most light bulbs go off over people's heads. And let's see how you fare. Okay. Um, Wash your hands before you wash your face. But don't, aren't I washing my hands when I wash my face? Because it's a soap, right? No, sir. <laughs> this dirt that was on your hands is now mixed with that soap and rubbed all over your face. But isn't that an so exfoliation? Your hands before you cleanse your face. Isn't that exfoliation That's in? disgusting. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay, so number two, cleanse your skin for 60 seconds. So like rub it for 60 seconds? Nobody. 60 seconds. Count to 60. Really? Now, is that just the face or the whole body? Um, I mean, let's start with your face and work okay. up to the rest of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but cleanse your facial skin for 60 seconds. Most people average about 20 seconds, mm. which doesn't give the product, whether it's like natural soap that you made on the back porch or something that you've gotten from a doctor's office or an esthetician. It doesn't give whatever's in the product time to work if you slam it on wipe, wipe, rinse it off. Mm -hmm. You're just wasting stuff. Okay. Um, A lot of clients of various ages are still suffering from breakouts. Okay. Um, And a lot of that's brought on because we're wearing masks currently as well. Um, Clean your phone regularly. Mm. Mm. 
if anybody even still talks on the phone. But if yeah. you're pressing it up against your face, you need to clean it regularly. Okay. Um, this one is terrifying. But a lot of times, and I've, I've changed the way I ask, ask this question now. I don't say how often do you change your sheets mm -hmm. because there have been answers that made me want to flee this room. <laughs> so what I say is <laughs> change your pillowcase regularly. What does regularly and, mean? I mean... Cause, cause look, look again. Look, remember, you talking, you talking to 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 dudes here. You, you, you. I mean, again, I'm married now, so it happens a little more frequently than it used to. But you talking about like you know, back in the day, you know, that towel stays hung up from the shower until it's so wet that it can't dry me off no more. <laughs> now, just, look, we, you, brothers, learning from sisters. Okay, I'm learning. Right. So look, no judgment here. <laughs> None. I would suggest that you change your entire bed once a week. Okay. If that's too much for you, buy some extra pillowcases mm -hmm. and change that pillowcase like every third day. Gotcha. Flip it over and use the clean side. So you get two mm -hmm. out of what, yeah. But it's it's all the places that bacteria could be that um, contribute to breakouts on our faces. Mm, interesting. Wow. Wash hands first before washing your face. Scrub for yes. 60 seconds. Clean Not your phone. scrub. Huh? What'd you Nobody say? said scrub. No See, again, scrubbing. that's what I'm saying. I need, I need help here. So I'm glad you read it back. That's, that's it. That's it. So it's not scrub. So it's clean. Massage your yes. face with the cleaner yes. for six, 60 seconds. Yes. Okay. Yes. Clean your phone if you put it up against your face. Um, change yes. your bed at least once a week and your pillowcase probably yes. every three days or so. Right? Yes. Okay. And uh, Because your pillowcase will absorb everything from your hair or lack of. My mm -hmm. husband shaves his head as well. But mm -hmm. that's, there's still skin rolling off of that. So, Absolutely. Um, hair, uh, drool, who knows what mm -hmm. all's going on. But yeah, change your pillowcase. Mm. And so change that and then, okay. And those are some regular, those are, I mean, honestly, everything there, I mean, I probably need to improve upon just to be okay. completely transparent with you. Um, I mean, now the bed gets changed. I mean, again, I'm married, so that, that gets done. She, she, she's yeah. good on that, but yeah. uh, she helps us there. She helps me there. But, um, but yeah, so fellas, if you're listening to this and some ladies who listening to that don't realize or hadn't thought about it, yeah, make sure to take yeah. in some of those routine activities. Now, what about like as far as like skincare regiments or things that you should do, you know, in addition to that? So when you come in to see me for a facial or uh, do a virtual consultation or just any interaction with me where you have an appointment, I typically do just my signature facial, which is cleanse and tone and experience exfoliate, extraction, various things. We'll talk about that later. But mm -hmm. far as far as a facial routine at home, you have to pick products that will work with your skin. Typically, mm -hmm. those should be recommended by um, an esthetician or maybe your dermatologist if you've got one that you trust. Mm -hmm. um, another reason that I went into skincare is because here locally in Knoxville, Tennessee, I was unable to find a dermatologist that works with black and brown skin on a regular mm -hmm. basis. They may have a client here or there, but um, they're not, not experts in black skin. Anybody yeah. that works with it regularly. Yeah, not no, you don't. Although you can't find I think I may have found. Oh, good. I may have found one, but that remains to be seen. I'll pass it along when I know. Absolutely. But um, what you really need to do is cleanse exfoliate, mm -hmm. moisturize, mm -hmm. and this is a big one, mm -hmm. sunscreen. Woo! Now, now check, okay. We need sunscreen. Now see, now again, see, I got this, this ball head here, right? And it's interesting. So cleanse, exfoliate, moisturize, and sunscreen. So this whole sunscreen thing has really popped up in the last couple of years primarily because we have kids, right? But the reality is I grew up in Augusta, Georgia, 
right? Where in the summertime, mm-hmm. it was 98 degrees and, you know, sun beating down, you cutting the grass, playing basketball, shirt off, no clothes on, whatever. You're out there just doing your thing in the sun. And honestly, right. growing up, never had any issues with that. Like, it was just like, yo, you just hot outside. You know, you sweat and it is what it is. Mm-hmm. When I was about a year or so after college, me and some of the fellas went to Miami. And we went down to Miami and we were on the beach all day being young and, you know, wild and all of that stuff. On the beach Mm -hmm. all day. Mm -hmm. And literally, when we got back to the hotel, I jumped in the shower and I turned the shower on and I was like, ah, what is that? What? Oh, what? Like, literally, my back, my head, my nose. I was like, yo, I grew up in Augusta, Georgia in 98 degrees, 100 degrees, middle of the sun. I have never been sunburned in my life. I went to Miami that one time and literally the top of my head, my shoulders, my nose, I was, I mean, I looked like the dog on some toxic crusader or something. So my face was peeling. I mean, it was Mm -hmm. wild. And so at that point, (laughs) I was just like, okay, us black folks need need a sunscreen too. But talk to us a little bit. We really do. Mm -hmm. We really do. Um, And for several reasons, you know, the incidence of skin cancer in black and brown skin is lower than it is Mm -hmm. in um, other people, but Mm -hmm. it still can happen. That's that's the most important issue, I think. Um, Number two is some of the problems that I corrected in uh, my studio. One of the biggest things I see is hyperpigmentation. Mm. And that is where there's been injury to skin and that injury leaves a scar or a darkened place, Mm -hmm. like a pimple or a scratch, and it leaves a scar. There are ways with consistency to treat those and even them out. But if you don't wear sunblock, I'm sorry, sunscreen, um, you're working against yourself. Mm. You gotta wear sunscreen. I have a similar incident that that you had that happened to me in Cancun. Mm -hmm. And like, I peeled to the paint meat on my nose. Wow. And it takes a lot to damage brown skin like that. You and I both ought to be ashamed. But yeah, yeah, you gotta do it. You got to. And you gotta put it on your face, Mm -hmm. you, Mm -hmm. your head, Mm -hmm. your ears. Mm Mm-hmm. Exposed skin. I mean, ladies, gentlemen, if you don't want alligator necks and chests, Mm -hmm. if your chest and neck is out, put it on out there. It doesn't matter if it's a cloudy day. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's raining. Mm. Just wear it every day. So, so, and you know, for that's that's a good point. So, literally, so it's not just when it's hot and sunny outside, we should have sunscreen on no matter what. Every day. You don't have to be going to play tennis. You can just be going outside. Um, When we were in school, my instructor showed us some slides from people, like maybe a long haul trucker Mm -hmm. and the difference in the side of the face that was facing the window and the other one. Wow. And tinted windows on the truck, but years of driving had made a marked difference in that side of the face. So yeah, it's, we need to wear sunscreen. That's, you know, it's, it's interesting, like, because um, again, and, and, you know, the title of your, you know, your business, you know, is Afro Mermaid Skincare. And so again, I think about the Afro part to it, right? And when I yeah. think about us, African descent being from close to the equator, and I think about the continent of Africa, and I think about even like in the Caribbean and things of that sort, like, do I mean, are you familiar with like some of the natural regiments that were that are done on a regular basis because you know you don't hear about the brothers on the continent getting sunburned neither like <laughs> talk to us a little bit about that well now and this is not scientific okay yeah yeah <laughs> this is just what i think we here are a tad watered down mhm it's gotcha. not the same as the brothers on the continent gotcha um i think that the ozone is a lot different than it was back in the day i mm-hmm. i bet that I'm going to research this. I bet that I bet people in Africa get sunburned and I bet there's an incidence of skin cancer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that uh, there's a lot of reasons why we should wear it. The least of which is for vanity. It mm-hmm. definitely is a health issue and it's easy to do. Like 
I sell a sunscreen that I myself have it double as my moisturizer during the day. So mm. it's literally all I put on during the day. Okay. I do my 17 step routine at night. Mm-hmm. And, and so like when you we go back to the concept of, cause you mentioned consistency being important, right? And uh-huh. you mentioned cleanse, exfoliate, moisturize, sunscreen. So you mentioned sunscreen should be done every, basically whatever's going to be exposed outside needs to be hit with some sunscreen. Um, Mm -hmm. what about the, you know, I guess the frequency of like cleansing, exfoliation and moisturization and moisturizing and talk to what it, I mean, I think I I understand exfoliating, but I thought I was exfoliating with the dirt from my hands and washing my face, but talk to (laughs) like, literally you got to put it where the goats can get it. When it comes to exfoliate, what do you mean by that? And what type of frequency do we need with that? So it depends on the skin, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, Oilier skin can take exfoliation more often, Mm -hmm. but you have to be careful what kind of products you use for that exfoliation. There's a running joke in the aesthetics community that the factory that makes St. Ives scrub should be burned to the ground. (laughs) because Those are like rubbing little sharp rocks all over your face, and that does nobody any good. It makes Mm. micro tears in your skin, so you end up with more pimples because those get infected anyway. Mm -hmm. Exfoliation products should be picked by your skincare professional Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. deeper exfoliation can be done during a treatment here. I do manual exfoliation. One of those is um, something I call dermaplaning. This Mm -hmm. is going to be scary, but I'm going to tell you, I'll take a number 10 scalpel. Whoa. Well, hold up, hold up, doctor. What you, uh, Continue. I take a number 10 scalpel and gently scrape the, the dead skin buildup from your face. Okay, stop for a second. Stop. See? Okay. Now we're going to have to, we're going to pivot into trust because yes. if I sit down, <laughs> yes. that's why, you know, if I step in for some facial treatment, you and I, if you're talking about, I'm about to pull a scalpel out. Okay. We're going to have to have us a few conversations prior Absolutely. to. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I had to have those conversations with my mom. It okay. took me a couple of weeks to get her to submit, <laughs> but that's a good physical exfoliation. Another way that I exfoliate here is um, you could do chemical exfoliation. Mm -hmm. You can do that with enzymes or you can do that with acids. Mm -hmm. So it just, after I've um, talked to you a little bit about what you're currently doing and the issues you'd like to approach, whether it just be healthier skin or you have a specific problem that you want to address, then I can recommend those kinds of products and the frequency with, um, with which you should come and visit me. Mm. That's interesting. So exfoliation. And then as far as cleansing is concerned, again, you're talking to a guy, it's just like, okay, whatever bar of soap we got in there is what, you know, I'm washing oh, no. my, my body and my face and everything with. And, you know, when the shower's done, okay, I done wash my face. Help a brother out. I think <laughs> as a rule, once we progress beyond the teenage sort of 20s breakout era of our life, we should switch cleansers to something that doesn't have a lot of alcohol and doesn't necessarily foam up. Mm. That is, that's something that's sort of difficult to convince people because if there's no bubbles, am I really clean? Yep. See, that's what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) The biggest thing is to cleanse your skin without stripping it of its natural barrier. The natural barrier is what makes skin healthy. So you only need to clean it. You don't need squeaky clean skin. Mm. This, you know, it's, it's interesting because like when you say that I was listening or I was talking to my sister-in-law who's a dentist and she was telling us because you know like when you brush your teeth you know i was like i like the hard bristles because i like to feel like i'm scrubbing my teeth and she was just like yes no. because when you when, when all you that. Know, the the toothbrushes that you get from the dentist office are usually soft bristle or mm-hmm. at most like medium at most but usually they mm-hmm. like to focus on the soft because you don't want to strip your teeth of i guess the enamel by going overboard yeah so as you mentioned that about skincare, it made me, it triggered a thought to dental care or dental hygiene as well. 
That's interesting. I never mm-hmm. thought about the squeaky mm-hmm. clean is not what you want. Yeah, and it's, I'm always amazed still continually um, about how many, not necessarily bad habits, but how we're all doing the same things that we could be better. Like a lot of times when I'm treating somebody, I, I like to feel before I look mm-hmm. to feel what's going on on their face and the, the high planes of the face, the cheeks and the forehead often are really dry. And I know it's because they're scrubbing their face mm. and you, you, you don't have to be rough like that. Let's all woosah <laughs> and be gentle with ourselves. You can get the job done without brushing your toothbrush flat. flat. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's real. <laughs> or scrubbing your face. That's... You let the products do the work. Oh, see, and that's interesting. So let the products do the work. So I guess that means you probably need to make sure you have good products. Absolutely. See, you know, it's interesting. Like when you have to, it's like fun even thinking about it. Like I like to make associations. That's how I make it real to myself, right? So I think about like in the kitchen, when you have a dull knife, right? You got to work hard to cut your vegetables or cut your meat because the knife is dull. Whereas you go to somebody else's kitchen or you buy a new set of knives or you get them sharpened and you're like, whoa, this thing is so much easier, you know, because yeah. the knives are sharper, right? It's like you yeah. have good tools. The same thing with golf. You know, when people play golf, you know, if you got some clubs that ain't all that great and you don't know what you're doing, you're trying to force it. Whereas if yeah. you got really good clubs and you understand form and all of that, you let the club do the work right? Absolutely. And so you mentioned let the products do the work. So that means we need to have really good products. And I'll be honest, this is on my end here. I'm, I'm naturally an El Cheapo. I'm trying to find an economical way out, right? Where are ways yeah. that we should skimp in ways that we should not skimp as it pertains to skincare? So I think that Wow, my mind is going in so many directions, so I'm going to ramble and you pick out what it's you It's all need. good. Take, look, bring it all. We need it all. So <laughs> I think that <laughs> all drugstore brands are not bad. I'm not one of those estheticians just like, ew, you've used something you bought at Walgreens. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times dermatologists will recommend CeraVe or Lubriderm or some of those things. And I like to say that those won't hurt you, but they won't help you either. Mm, Gotcha. So, I mean, when you're looking for a skincare professional, look for somebody with, that's willing to take the time to get to know you, Mm. your background, what you're trying to do with your skin is good with product knowledge and can aim you in the direction for drugstore products or the kind that, or the line that they sell. Mm -hmm. Um, For black and people of color. I was going to ask you something there because, because the, the thing too, though, is, I mean, I guess I'm being selfish and asking, you know, are there areas that we could potentially financially cut corners versus um, having to go out or, and are there pro- like, for instance, you mentioned the cleaner, the cleanser, exfoliation, moisturization, sc- sunscreen, are there buckets where it's like, okay, if you're going to try to, you know, go not spend a whole lot of money in these buckets, this is where you can go. But on the flip side, you do not need to skimp on this. Are there certain buckets like that? Because again, I ain't gonna lie. When we start talking too much on the uh, specifics of it, it's gonna be a lot of people are gonna be like, man, look, I'm just gonna keep my skin the way it is. I ain't spending X, Y, and Z for no doggone bottle of lotion. <laughs> you know? Okay, okay, point yeah. taken. I hear you now. Got okay. You. Um, I guess it depends on what you want to do with your skin. If you have issues you want to address that make better, mm-hmm. you absolutely need to use professional skin care okay. because nothing that you can buy at be. Target or the drugstore is going to have the concentration of active ingredients mm. that you need to fix anything. Bingo. Um, to fix hyperpigmentation with drugstore products, 
could take two years mm. to fix them with medical grade products could fit, take three months. Mm. Ding. So it, That's it. Okay. It's, gotcha. It's results driven. If you're just, if, if there are people out there who want to just maintain what they've got, they've got going on, they really don't have any interest in professional skincare. Just tell me what I could use. You know, those, those, middle of the road things, Lubriderm, CeraVe. Um, they've got moisturizers, they've got sunblocks, they've got cleansers. Uh, dermatologists recommend them all the time, but that's just going to clean your face. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Now that makes, cause and that's what I was just stuff. trying to understand. Cause I understand like, obviously you can probably go as expensive as you want and spend thousands of dollars on this specific serum that you can get from the Amazon or from, you know, central Congo. It came from, you know, you can find something, yeah. like that. but then you could also, to your point, yeah. just what's the cheapest thing on the shelf at your grocery store. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and I just wanted to kind of get your perspective on like, you know, cause again, like I always try to find value, but I also want to know what's best and what areas you should not cut corners. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've been programmed. I can't, I can't no, bring no, no, myself no. to tell you. I'm gonna tell you, everything <laughs> that you've given thus far has been, it's been eye-opening for me. Like, it's one of those things where it's really gonna challenge me. And, you know, when my wife hears it, she's gonna be like, see, you see why I need to do this? And you say, I'm like, oh, okay, I got you. But <laughs> so you didn't just yeah. help her out, I mean, to be honest. But, um, but real talk, like, this is so important because I'm gonna be honest with you, skincare and dudes, we really don't prioritize it. Most of us don't. You know, it's just kind of like whatever's available, we do it. And we don't understand that there are potential ramifications to not taking care of your skin. And it's not just the aesthetics and the look. There are health, you know, uh, ramifications to not taking care of your skin. You mentioned, you know, skin cancer and, you know, using the wrong stuff, which can open up windows to infection and all of that stuff. I mean, we need to know these things. And I appreciate you as an expert sharing you know, all of this so that we can grow and become better. Again, this is brothers learning from sisters. You know, something else I wanted to share for people that may see this that don't live in my area, because I'm hoping all of you that do are going to come and see me. Yes. So we're going to get your contact are looking info. for an esthetician. Mm -hmm. Say that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> when Thank you me. are looking for an esthetician, I'm sorry, when you're looking for an esthetician in your area, um, some things that I think you should look for, of course, are licensing, mm -hmm. um, inspections, insurance. Don't mm -hmm. just roll in somebody's room and lay down and let them take a scalpel to your face. Ooh, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that their space is clean. Um, make sure that... You've read their reviews. On your first visit with that person, I think that you should make a list of the questions that you want to answer. Mm. Jot down some notes of the things that you're using now. It, um, in a lot of cases with my clients, gosh, in so many cases, they're using too much. Mm. And they're using a mishmash, mishmash of stuff like, Yes, you can use different products from different lines that may work together, but you may be using two products that are working against each other. Mm. And when you use things from the same line, they were formulated to work together to build off one another. So there's a price point out there for everybody. Like you said, you can go really, really expensive or you can go drugstore, but you have to be strategic about the way you put those things together and you have to use them. I can't see you six weeks from now and you say it, it's not working. Well, are you using it every day? No. Because mm. then you're just wasting your money and time mm. and mine. Frankly. You said consistency earlier. Yeah. So you dropped it. I mean, that's, I think that's the whole point there. And I hope y'all paid attention to that. If you're looking for an esthetician in your local environment, you know, things to pay attention to. She gave you, she gave you some game there. Licensing, 
their inspections, insurance, cleanliness, the reviews that others have left. Also, if you're going and visiting with them, make sure you make notes of the questions that you want to, to ask and, and that you want answers to. But really keep that in mind if you don't live in Knoxville, Tennessee, because if you live in Knoxville, you need to go visit Afro Mermaid Skincare because Sybil Bailey need to be your esthetician to help you with all your skincare needs. But if you're out of Knoxville, and you're looking for one for a personal relationship, be mindful of the info that she dropped there because those are things to look for. But on the flip side of that, if you're not in Knoxville, don't you do like a virtual consults as well? I do, I do. I, um, I, I, I added those um, at a time when we couldn't all get out of the house and see each other in person and they've been pretty successful. Mm -hmm. um, we spend some time talking about some of the things that we've talked about today, You know what you're doing now, what you'd like to address. Um, and go from there. I even have samples that I can send out from virtual consultations. So that helps as well. Mm. And so and to that part, so the, anybody listening to this, any place in the world, if you're, they're wanting to connect with Sybil Bailey for Afro Mermaid Skincare and really get a consult, what's the best way to connect with you? Is it a website, phone number? How do they do so? The best way to connect with me is with, my website and it's afromermaidskincare.com mm -hmm. there's a list of services there you would book a virtual consultation like you would any other appointment okay. and once you book the service i would contact you about how we'll get on video chat what method we'll use okay Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So afromermaidskincare.com. I'll make sure to have that in the show notes. So anybody listening, you just go down and you click on afromermaidskincare.com. Schedule, if you're not in Knoxville or you're not within driving distance of Knoxville, schedule a virtual consult and you can literally get blessed by all of this information, this wisdom. But what's most, most important is this passion. That's this thing that's been inside of her for decades that she's been sitting on. And then all of a sudden, she, the time was right for her to go get the official training to match with the passion. And now she has this organization, this thing right here that can really serve you and bring the best out of your skincare regimen. So y'all definitely go to afromermaidskincare.com and reach out, get that virtual concert. Again, anywhere in the world, she'll work with your time zone, you know, and yeah. And and the thing too, though, is being black folks, being African-Americans, you know, it's always good to find someone who understands your journey, understands your story, and understands some of the things that we're dealing with from a skincare perspective. And you're going to get that with Sybil Bailey. Yes, you will. I, uh, you know, one last thing, even outside of skincare, not to toot my own horn, but beat, beat. There is magic in these hands. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourselves. Come get loved on. Mm. Somebody to take care of you and your skin. It makes you feel better. It makes you look better. It's good for you. It's an hour where you get to relax and the focus is on you. And right now, more than ever, we need that. Mm. So I hope y'all listening to that. So that's that's ladies and the fellas. Absolutely. Get get, get yourself taken care of. You know, self care has been a, a, a huge theme over the last couple of years. And when you think self care, we don't always define what self care is because it's like this umbrella. Self care. Well, what is that? Is that travel? Is that you know hanging out? Is that massage and facials and what skin care? I mean, what is self care? And the thing about self care is it's self care. So whatever care your self needs, you need to do that. That's the guys and the ladies. Okay. And Sybil Bailey with Afro Mermaid Skin Care can be part of your self-care regimen to bring out that shine. Let that- Absolutely. When they say black don't crack, well, you helping that black to not crack, right? <laughs> yes. I love it. I love yes. it. Yes. And, and so from a contact information perspective, y'all make sure to visit afromermaidskincare.com. If you're in Knoxville, visit and go by and check her out. If you're outside of Knoxville, make sure to visit and schedule a virtual consult because literally she gonna change your life. Like she didn't change mine just in our conversation right here. So I wanna tell you, thank you for sharing with us today. 
And so thank you for the conversation, Michael. This was absolutely lovely. Mm, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it because I know I did. And I learned I a was lot, nervous so. for no reason. Yeah, I know. I told you. See, look, you you were telling me how nervous you're gonna be and all of that. And guess what? Is you you the star of the show. I'm just here to pull out gems. That's all I'm here to do. <laughs> Well, hey, fellas Thank and ladies, you very listen, much. no problem at all. No problem at all. We're going to do this again. And so everybody listening to Brothers Learning from Sisters, I hope you all have enjoyed this. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Share this thing out. We want everybody across the world to hear about Brothers Learning from Sisters, hear these dynamic conversations in which I and brothers are learning from dynamic and powerful sisters on looking at things from different vantage points so that we can become the best versions of ourselves. And make sure to visit Afro afromermaidskincare.com and check out Sybil Bailey and if you reach out to her let her know you heard about her on Brothers Learning from Sisters and yo until next time y'all be blessed well and wise and I'll holler at you peace